Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, welcome to the last seminar for this semester. We have two presenters, uh, Dr. Bashir and Dr. Clement. So, uh, Dr. Atia will speak uh, from this time until 10, uh, 11 20, and then we will ask him questions, and then we switch to Dr. Clement for another 20 minutes and five minutes of questions. So, welcome, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Mijola, for uh, giving uh, us the opportunity because uh, I will present uh, this presentation with my team today for all of you. Uh, the presentation is a part of the uh, last workshop we did uh, in uh, summer in Baton Rouge, brainstorming. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, acknowledge and appreciate Dr. William Wishosen and Dr. Uh, Christopher uh, Gregg for organizing the workshop uh, last summer. And uh, I was uh, uh, the first one, and I was only the uh, person from Sono to attend this workshop last summer. And uh, I'm asking uh, all of you, uh, Department of Biology, uh, Physics, Chemistry, uh, Math, to share next summer in this program, because it's really very important to develop our teaching and to also uh, see the interference between math and biology uh, at this workshop. Uh, the all appreciation actually should go to Dr. Uh, Joseph uh, Olubadua for his grant because without this grant we cannot really uh, run the uh, active learning. Uh, he put uh, 360 uh, clickers for uh, biology and chemistry uh, instructors. So we have enough to cover 15 instructors. So please adjust your uh, clicker to channel number seven. Just channel number seven. If you already, if you already just tried, if you already uh, study before the uh, brainstorming, yes or no, A or B, that's it. Okay, so you need over here that is to run through the channel over here and then write number seven. So you will see number seven in the top corner over here. You will see number seven in the top corner. <coughs> so if you now, if you are ready, just if you study anything before uh, for the brainstorming or learning, please should uh, yes or no, A or B. You just only letter A or B that says not open. Not open. Not open. <laughs> <laughs> I have already three already over here. Yeah, channel seven. I see channel seven. Not put so you can start it again. There it is. Okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, just yes or no, A or B. That's it. And enter. Yeah, just yeah, just say it and it will come out. Oh. Is this fine? I will go with 17. So, uh, yes, 59% uh, versus uh, 41. This is good. That's the majority of you already uh, familiar with the brainstorming uh, technique. Uh, so, in general, the brainstorming, it's uh, group-based work to uh, storm your brain, to storm your brain. So, you are storming your brain in reality to raise the ideas. And you, after raining the ideas, you will, you will select the best one to, uh, to solve the problem. So this is the meaning of the active, uh, of the uh, brainstorming, which is again is part of the active learning. Uh, okay. 
So the history of the uh, brainstorming, the first one applied brainstorming with a Muslim scholar, his name Abu uh, uh, Hanifa, established the juristic school, or in Arabic called the Fiqh school, so uh, on the uh, group based learning in uh, 737. Uh, then after 1200 years, almost 1200 years, uh, Alex Osborne uh, reapplied the active learning and the brainstorming for his group and his department. Uh, how to apply the active uh, learning or brainstorming? I will speak only in the level of the classroom. So the first thing you need to class, uh, classify the class into several groups. The first group, uh, any group should be from five to nine. Do not exceed 10, do not reduce, uh, do not actually decrease it uh, uh, under five because you cannot get any uh, good result if the number less than five or more than 10. So the second thing, how to first classify the, your classroom? Uh, based on the GPA of the students, the highest GPA, and, and make different groups, the average for each group should be the same for each one. Uh, how you can just sort, if you are working in a different uh, uh, just place, whatever, and uh, you have, you would like to design a certain car. So, what kind of people, what sort of people you would like to invite? You, of course, if you would like to design a car, so you need to invite mechanics, you need to engineers, you need to invite dealers, whatever. So, if you dealing with biology, you have to invite biology people, dealing physics, physics people, and so on. Um, the how long it should be uh, from 40, uh, 45 minutes to an hour maximum, so to have the good results and. What are the phases for the brainstorming? The first phase is the to generate the idea, which is the reading of the idea. Second phase is to evaluate and select. The uh, uh, facilitators or leaders, in general, leaders for the classroom should be the highest GPA. This is what I have today. Uh, three leaders from the, my classes, still biology and biology 106 classes, the highest GPA students. And uh, never, in general, never. If, if you are a leader in a group, never, never criticize any idea. And also in the classroom, never uh, make just or put the student under stress to give the or to give you the idea or solution. In stress, the students will give nothing to you. So never do, do it. So what are the uh, again steps for the brainstorming? First step is to think, and then to pair with other, and finally to share your idea. If we will take just example for it, if you. Uh, this is the application for the brainstorming. So what, what is the original source of your body mass? So if you can vote first, and then I will give you one minute to discuss, and then we'll see the difference between the results after and before. As I will go with 14, it's fine, no problem. So it's the, you now mentioned the water is the original source for the uh, body mass. So I will give you one minute to discuss uh, just between you and to see what is the really original source. And put again after discussion, just one minute discussion among you. A biology instructor can share, of course, the idea with others. <laughs> Yeah, so after discussion, that's okay. Seven so far. I need the same, almost the same number, 14. To have the good result, I need the same number. 10, 11, 12. Uh, two more, one more, one more, one more. Uh, one more. Can somebody else? I have the same number? Yeah, this fine. It's still, still water. In reality, the answer is the sunlight. The original source is the sunlight. 
white sunlight because this is the, the first effect of, for the photosynthesis is the sunlight and then water followed by water. So the original source is the sunlight and not the water. But this is, by the way, so this is what we are doing now. What we are doing, again, what we are doing now uh, is just, we think, just the first step to think uh, in visual field, second, uh, to pair your idea and then sharing the one I shared already with you to give you the correct answer. How do you know your students know? Uh, Shuan will uh, tell uh, the answer for that, uh, this question in one minute. Okay. How do you know your students know? You know your students know when they um, speak with confidence and when they can answer your questions with confidence. They also, you also know that they know when they can reciprocate the information that you give them back to you or to other students in a manner where everyone understands. You also know that your student knows if they can take the place of a teacher and be able to teach you the exact same thing and uh, have results where everybody understands. Thank you. Again, how do you know your students know that uh, after explanation of sodium channels, rule of sodium channels, calcium, uh, the said, now I understood my disease, yeah. a mechanism so, to talk about. Um, I have multiple sclerosis, it's an autoimmune disease. Um, I sort of understood my disease better once I understood the mechanisms of the sodium channels and the voltage gated calcium channels. Um, for instance, with uh, the voltage gated calcium channels, so they open and you have this signal there, right? Because my myelin shaft is so damaged that the signals can't transfer down. They never go to the post synapse like they're supposed to. So like I'm saying go right, but my body can't respond because it's not getting the proper channel. Thank you. Uh, now, as my um, uh, student, uh, Mr. Kip, he has uh, previous experience in brainstorming and army. He will speak about a uh, little bit his project and his uh, previous experience in the brainstorming and army. Well, brainstorming and army, we usually bring a group of people together to make a decision on what is an actual truth. And the truth usually lies between what people believe and what's actuality. So everyone brings a, a wealth of experience to each of our uh, knowledge base, and we bring them together and we communicate. Now, we was challenged with the question of um, the comparabilities between intelligent design and evolution. Now, all of us had different religions. We all had a different knowledge base. We had a lot of different things that we couldn't come together. And with the question, was, it wasn't necessarily are they compatible with each other, but are they, but are they compatible? It wasn't a conflict. So based on our religious views, we knew that the question wasn't necessarily the compatibility, it was, does God exist? And we came up with some different uh, views about the conflicts of religion to prove, disprove the Bible, they challenged the existence of God, the creation um, basically proven through the Big Bang and the evolution and the exception of man. And we went back, went back in time. And we found that this is a, a Catholic priest, his name is St. Thomas Aquinas, who actually created his theories of the existence of God. And he basically says that from the beginning is always the first cause, and the first cause is God. And as a group, we accepted it. And it was basically, we always taught in science that everything came from a single point, basic science. You know, if you, if you rewind time, the stars are flying away from a central point. And at some point, the beginning of the time, there was one point. There was no light. There was one singularity. And from the instant, Big Bang basically proves that the Bible is true. The Bible said the earth was without form and there was no light until he said, let there be light. And it's proven that the Big Bang says from that point, there was light. You go to the next one, But being in a political system, we know that religion conflicted with science. Back in the 30s, there was actually laws that forbid teachers to teach uh, evolution because it conflicted with their religious beliefs. And it caused a lot of conflict, and it caused conflict within our group. But as a group, we came up with particular answers of how the group would function. If you go to the next one, Doc. And we basically know as a fact that as we explore more into science, we gain more knowledge. What seems to be random and unknown brings order. As we find the order, we know that it's perfect. And we know from perfection, there only has to be one source of perfection. Perfection is not random. It's not a sexual selection. It's not an adaptation. It's true. Now, this is something that they call the superhedron collider. 
the actual hand particles that would spin around almost at the speed of light and collide with each other. And in, in 2012, they proved that there's a, there's a particle called the Higgman Bose, the Boson particle, that basically exists everywhere, and it gives mass to everything. And it exists in all the vacuums of space in every aspect of, of the entire universe. And it's called the God particle. So to say that God is an omnipotent being, there is a particle that out there that's everywhere that affects everything. And our argument basically went that evolution is not necessarily uh, uh, not true, but it's just that we're revealing the truths of God. And every, every time we go further in science, we'll find that these truths are good. And our group actually came up with that. Now, as a group, we couldn't argue what's true, what's right, what's wrong, but we see that we kept our knowledge that we know, the things that we were taught and believed, and as we learn more in science, we know that these things are really true. And as a group, um, it was more of the variety of ideas that kept redirecting us. It was an argument, and then we all took a piece, and we researched each part. Some works were researched the scientific portion of it, others researched the religious portion, and then how they come to certain conclusions. Uh, that variety gave us a clear view and a clear argument. And it wasn't necessarily the question, but it was the argument that we gained as a group that made it coherent. It was one thought. So it, it worked out well for us, and it gave us good direction. Now, being a group leader, we have to task everyone. Make sure some people are on task. And then you're going to notice some don't participate really well. They don't stay on task. Uh, they don't turn in assignments. And we all sort of come together to put it together. It, it worked out well. Thank I, you. I, I, I will see with the, my uh, students, uh, Mr. Uh, Clinton. This is the last uh, one who will talk about his leadership and his uh, project for the ATB and a couple of minutes and that's it. Yeah, Mr. Clinton. Hello. 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 <laughs> um, as far as the, the, the uh, active learning and being a good leader, initially, you come into it as a shock. Because you, you got, you, first day of class, you're not even thinking on those terms. And suddenly, like, you, you, just, you just had, like, eight kids and suddenly you're responsible for them. You know, and it, I can tell you it's always been fun. It does help, though. I mean, being responsible, you just, at this point, I'm old enough, I just want to be responsible for myself. And you got kids that are so much younger than me, so it is different. But when you're working in groups, a lot of times when you're working through problems in class, you'll give us something, and it's this long paragraph, you got to figure out the answer, and it helps to be able to discuss it with other people and kind of bounce ideas around. And at some point, we actually come up with the right answer. So, I mean, I think it's helpful. It's just, as the group leader from this side, it's not that much fun. Because it's like, you, you feel sometimes like you're expected to do more or always know the answer. Or, you know, but it, it, it but I, I see the purpose of it. Uh, we have three minutes for uh, open discussion. And is that uh, the group, please, my team, you can come to the store. Three minutes, uh, and that's it. Okay. Any questions for them? Yes, sir. I have a question uh, for the gentleman in red. So, what was your conclusion about this God is this? I would like to know. Love the conclusion of what? Um, you said that your group was focused on the question, does God exist? It is. And I had a little more in our presentation, but uh, <clears throat> a lot of philosophers go on through life. I think it's like Nietzsche say, from chaos comes order. Um, there was other philosophers, St. Anselm, who followed St. Aquinas, basically went on and did the ontological theories about the existence of God. And everything that they spelled out basically uh, comes to the conclusion that, yes, there's a God. And the more that we find and search into science, the more we can reveal his mysteries. His mysteries is his perfection. Um, you can think back in time. You didn't even know what molecules were. You didn't know what bacteria. We didn't know anything. The stars. We thought the whole universe was ro rotated around the earth. And as we gained more knowledge, we started challenging our religious beliefs. But then you realize that there was perfection. And if you look further into to history, they say that you have to have a perfect design. You must have a perfect design. So how can something so perfect just happen randomly? And it's not. Um, the more we search into it, the more we see that it's perfect, and the perfection is God, and that's the original source, the, the truth of everything. Yes, sir. Uh, Last question. Where, is this, uh, where did you find this particle? Where is it located? What do you mean, the Hedron Collider? The Hedron Collider? Yeah. 
It's called the, the Bosom Higgs. Right. It, they call it, it's nicknamed the God Particle, but apparently it's subatomic, and it acts upon every subatomic element. It, it's, it exists everywhere. It's, it was created, it was discovered in 2012. I think it's in Switzerland somewhere. That, that collider is like uh, 13 miles around. And it, it accelerates neutrons and collides and it breaks in parts and they look at the collisions to determine the parts and they found the God particle. Do you listen to my question? Uh, because the God that I worship, uh, space cannot contain him. It doesn't contain him. Well, uh, it, it, the thing is this, and, and I know what you're saying. Uh, it doesn't contain a particle. There is no mass. There is no, right? He acts on everything. We say and believe the same thing. But the more we look more into science, we're going to see how perfect it is. And how is it possibly perfect? And how is it possible for somebody like us? We, see, now, the thing is, I, I've got a lot of this from uh, Loyola. They teach a lot of these religious things. And they say that we are temporal beings, that we see things in sequences. We, can't, we go from one day to the next day, yeah. right? And God sees the beginning and the end in one time. How do you describe time to a being that doesn't see time? How do you do it? Time is described for us. So uh, you're going to put mass to something. You're going to describe something you couldn't see. If I take you back a thousand years and I fly a helicopter over you, how would you describe it? Is it a metal grasshopper? Is it something? So how do you take a being like us who is imperfect and describe something that's perfect? It's not possible. Right. But the more we find out his mysteries, the more we see it's perfect. On that note, we will stop. Let's change your fire. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Preacher, help us. So I'm going to talk a little bit. Sir, 